Uh, the chestahedon fits between these two. This is eight. Okay, this is eight sides. This is four. And right in between the relationship is the seven. But the seven is not regular. So what is this teaching us? What is, what is going on here with this? What can we learn from this personally? And what we can learn from it is this. We need to be able to work with paradoxes. <laughs> paradoxes is what we got to work on. What are paradoxes? There are things, okay, well, let's see, what's a paradox? Um, this form, this chestahedron form, is an expanding form. This expands. Okay, none of the platonic forms are expanding. They're contracting. This is expanding. And what I mean by that, expanding, is that you know that the platonic form is opening up. Nobody in the history of 6,000 years of studying these things ever opened one of them up. They just cut them off. Cut the corners, cut the corners, cut the corners. 99.9% .9 of everything you see on the internet relationship to these forms is old stuff. We have got to take these forms and do something new with them. And stop, you know, the history of platonic forms is very interesting, very important. But after you learn the history, then there's more to come. So it is opening up. So it's an expanding form. But if I take this very form here, I don't open it up, but I put it into a cube. It looks like this. Same size, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Just so happy. <laughs> okay, so the platonic form of a tetrahedron will fit into a cube. I do it on purpose. <laughs> you got to know how to do it. <laughs> okay. If I take this form, and instead of cutting all the corners, I put it into a spiral, like a vortex. I vortex this form inside a cube. And when I do that, I get a whole new transformation of form Whoa. through the cube. Whole new one. Yeah. Hmm. So the cube is starting at the bottom of my hand here, and as I'm vortexing it up inside cubes, okay, it gets to this middle space right here. That's a chestahedron perfect. That is the chestahedron sitting in a cube. Not kidding you. And if I keep going up there, it becomes this form. I take that form and put it back into this one and twist them again, and that's the inside chamber of the left ventricle of the human heart. So, you're going to think, well, you know, I'd like to see him prove that. Um, that's okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> now, this is what's happening here in the cube, which represents the Earth. The Earth is the cube of all the platonic forms, okay, because it has, it's the only place in the, uh, only physically is there a possibility of 90 degrees. Across the head threshold, there is no 90 degrees. Only here. That's why we have all 90 degrees everywhere. 90 degrees on a birth chart that the astro astrologers do, wherever you have 90 degrees is your problem. And that's the reason that is, is that problem that you have in your life is at 90 degrees on your chart. But it's also the, the, the problem that you're being faced with, whether you have a chart or not. That problem that you have, okay, and every one of you have that, including me, we have problems we have to deal with here, and they're individual and they're different for everyone. Those problems we have to deal with, and they are our gifts. They've been given to us as our gift. And you should thank yourself every time you run into that problem, because that's how you can transform. You can't transform others, they have to do that themselves. You have to do that transformation. And you have to take that problem and deal with it. Not run away with it. Not block it. Yeah? Not excarnate. Nothing like that. You gotta take that problem and look at it and work with it. 
And that's what's happening here, based on the human heart in a cube. So here's the paradox. The paradox is this. This form, and believe me, the human heart, okay, is expanding and contracting at the same time. Think of something that's expanding, but that's contraction. That's what we have to deal with in our mind. We have to deal with that. That's a paradox. So, this is expanding with the tetrahedron and contracting in a vortex. So when it contracts in a vortex, it's, it's contracting, but on the opening up, it has the same size, they're expanding. So what does the heart have to do? The heart is all about trying to deal with opposites. Bringing balance in in opposites, politically, emotionally, relationships, whatever. We must try to balance polarities. That's one of the consciousness items that this form is bringing. So, uh, I'll show you one more thing. This is what the, when you spin this into a bell, this is the geometry of that spin. Wow. Well, this is very good that you must take something you can't see. You see, this, this is, you can't see what's in here. But you can. So this is about working with the unseen. Don't just think that the unseen is some ghost or something. The unseen has a reality. And that reality can become objective. And that's what geometry is all about. That's why you're here. There is truth in geometry. You can't cheat. It's truth. There isn't anything you can do about it. So you make that and you make that into a real bell. And there it is. And there's the open. And what's interesting about that is that this is the outside of the heart and that's a micro valve, exactly. And that part that comes out here is the aortic valve that leaves the aorta. And I have that on the internet. If you really want to know about the heart research that I've done, you need to go on the internet and look under heart, not art, but heartscience.org. Heartisticscience.org. Not artistic, but heartistic. There's two lectures I've given to doctors in San Francisco. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, take this off and see what we got here next. Uh, we have the tetrahedron, and what's interesting about it is that this is bronze, of course. Um, this shows you exactly here that the form is between an octahedron and a heptahedron. So it's an octahedron and a cube. So there are octahedron and eight faces, six faces, seven is right in the middle. And then points. The octahedron has six, the hexagram has eight, seven right in the middle. Okay, here's the octahedron has 12 edges. The chestahedron has 12 edges. And so does the cube. And of course together they add up 21. This one is all triangles, this one is square, the chestahedron is the balance between the two, and they all areas are one. Now, another thing that you have to understand is the chestahedron is the balance between two polarities. The triangles that are opening up, okay, and the star that's coming in. Four is basically Earth, and three is basically heaven, and geometry throughout the past. This form is bringing the balance of heaven and earth together. It's the first form to do that. Three dimensionally. Two dimensionally, yes. Not two dimensionally. Okay, so that tells you about the chestahedron. Um, there is another picture of it, and this is the human heart, the geometry of the human heart that uh, comes from minimum surfaces, and this is the inside of the heart with geometry. Now, you have to remember that what is going on here is that once a form becomes organic, how do you get a form organic? Okay. Once it becomes organic or geometrically, 
this part right here is known as scaffolding. But then, when the scaffolding is gone, here's another one. There's more scaffolding. When the scaffolding is gone, then you have your form. Now, not this one. This is the vesica. But, but the idea is, is that the scaffolding is gone. That's why when, you, when I say there's a, a cube inside your chest that the chestahedron sits at at root 3, the cube is gone. And so is this form that I've showed you with the 12 inches. That's gone too. That's the scaffolding. But what's behind the scaffolding you don't see. And you look at the Roman arch, you don't see the scaffolding. It's not there anymore, but it was needed. Okay, so I'm going to miss the vesica here and go to the flower of life. Fantastic. And then this shows you my first time working with the flower of life. And the flower of life, I thought, somehow related to this form. And it did, because the blue shape is the form. If you look right straight down on the top of the chest, that's the blue shape. And even there is the six-pointed star. But that was in 2001. I left it for 12 years because I, I had other things to do. But once this seminar came about, I decided that I'm going to look at it again. And I'm so glad I did. I am so glad I did. So here is uh, what also is into it in three-dimensionally. And uh, there's the seed of life and the flower of life. OK. So here's all these triangles. I, 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 I've made these. Uh, here's a hexagram. See a hexagram right there, right? And there's your star David or Merkaba or a two-dimensional you know, star David. <coughs> so what's interesting about this whole thing is that this hexagram, I'll go back and I'll show you what I originally wanted to show you here, is that this part right here is root 3, right there. <coughs> now that's the same as that, root, that, that line up there, except it's done with circles. And the circles become triangles, so that red line is right here, from here to here, that red line. Two triangles. And the red line. Okay, so what I had discovered was is if I take that distance right there, you know I'm accurate, you know I'm accurate, and if I put it in the middle of this form, which doesn't like to come apart. Okay, I got this here. If I put it in the middle here and I bring it out, it makes a cube. Oh, wow. You probably didn't know a hexagram makes a cube, but it does. Perfect. At root three. So in root three, which is called forming forces, I can take a sphere and put it in the cube. There's a cube now that I just showed you in the white lines with the Q-tips. So there is a cube, there is a sphere that will go inside there. And it has the middle of all six faces. It touches. Okay, so if I compress this sphere from all six directions, it makes a cube. And if I expand the cube, it will make another sphere that will go around this. And I have an example of that here. So now I have a cube, a sphere, a cube, and a sphere. See how it works? Mm -hmm. This is called a duel. You can do this. All right. <laughs> so when I did this, when I brought this part of the six-sided hexagram up, it made exactly that circle. That circle fits in the cube that this makes. So now the flower of life can relate to the earth and the core. Now, all right. Now, here comes here comes some magic that uh, is unbelievable. That this is what's going on. I, mean, I could just say, after this, go home because it's just <laughs> this is just magic. <laughs> well, first off. 
there's a perfect hexagram in the chestahedron, and there it is. See? Perfect. <coughs> That means this distance and this distance and this distance, all the same. Okay, so the thing that was really interesting about this is that this distance isn't the same as the bottom. Do you see that? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. See how this is, this is higher than this is. I want all of you to see this because it's just unreal. I want that thing in the middle. <laughs> but of course, I told you, you can't cheat. If I move this up a little bit, then this gets too big, and this gets too small. If I move it down, this is the opposite. This gets too big, and this gets too small. So it only has one place, so I can't cheat. So all I have is that right there. But it does make a hexagram, and I really, that's really cool. So then what happened was, uh, I realized that if I take the hexagram, and I guess I should start drawing a little bit here. I take the hexagram, which looks like this. There's a hexagram. If I take the hexagram straight out like this, it makes a triangle. <coughs> And of course, if I continue to do that, it will make the Star of David, won't it? So I did that. I thought, why don't I do that? So I did. I took that. Uh, and I took it out. Can you see those, that star that I, I, I scribed in there? That star is exactly what I drew yeah, on, the, on the board. The, see the star here? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the chestahedron is in the middle of that circle. See that? If you can't, well, when anyway, you come up here, then you might be able to see it. So I use a copper and a, I use brass wires and I weld them and so forth. Okay, so it's still not helping me because it's still not in the middle. Look at that. This is too short. So I decided what I would do is to make a sphere the size of that circle. Completely touches every point. That's why it's not in the center, because these three points wouldn't touch. So all four points touch now, and that sphere, okay, centers that ring. That's amazing. Isn't it? Uh, this guy, he deserves a lot, I'm telling you. That, this is amazing here. This is me. Who did this? This is not me. I didn't do this. What's behind all of this? All right, so in the very center of this, like I showed you over there, there's a cube. There it is, the same size ring, and right in the middle, there's a cube. Hard to see. And in that cube, I can put a sphere. There's the sphere, the red sphere. That is the same one that I showed you before that sits inside here. So the cube, okay, you can see the cube, and you see the sphere in it. Got to be the right size. And that particular sphere is exactly the size of the core of the Earth. And this is the crust of the Earth. So the 